with things clearing up in the world right now, you may be wondering where is it that you should be targeting to get your start in overseas basketball? What leagues, what teams? Well, today I wanna to go over that with you with the five easiest leagues that I believe any rookie or starter in overseas basketball should be contacting first. And we'll explain why and how you may apply to each of those leagues. So let's get right into it. Now, disclaimer alert, before we go any further, no overseas basketball league will be easy to get into. I know you saw the title and thought maybe, ah, oh, here's my chance. But the truth is, none of them will be easy. There's so many players out there trying to get on. It's very competitive no matter where you go. Even if you play in a lesser league, in a low-level league, there are guys who are overqualified and they have to accept money or pay or a situation that frankly isn't suitable for their skill level, but they have to start somewhere. So if you're a beginner, if you're starting out, then this video is for you. Now for that reason, that's why I always, always, always say that the best league for you to get into is always the league where you have nationality or passport. That is the easiest league for you to get into. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, then you better scroll over to some of my other videos because I've been going through this and beating it down like a dead horse that you need your passport, you need your nationality in a different, in multiple countries, just because that's gonna open up so many opportunities for you because you'll count as a national rather than an import and there will be more roster spots for you. You'll be a bigger commodity. Teams will look at you. Teams will actively look to try and actually sign you throughout the year. Now, there are some exceptions to that. Some leagues, for instance, in Puerto Rico with the BSN, that league is so high level that I know many Puerto Ricans who are playing internationally in different pro leagues throughout the world and they can't get on in Puerto Rico. And now that league is one of the exceptions because it is so high level. You need a certain level, a certain resume to get into that league or coaches or people are just not gonna take you serious in that. If you want a quick and short answer without even looking at the five countries, that's the answer. The easiest league is the country in which you have nationality or a passport. Now, without the way, Let's get on to the five leagues. Now, the first league that I would really try to get into if I was trying to get my start in overseas basketball is in Spain, EBA. This is the fourth division in Spain. Now, this league at the time of this recording actually has 127 teams, multiple conferences and divisions throughout Spain. So with more teams, more conferences means more opportunities for you. They allow one import and one Kano2 player. So it will be a little difficult, but still at the end of the day, that's still 127 spots up for grabs. Now, the one thing I will say about Spain is that it is getting more difficult to actually play in these leagues, not because of the competition level, but because of logistically speaking, the Spanish government is really cracking down on players who are coming over to Spain to play professional basketball. There was actually, in speaking with coaches and speaking with scouts over there and speaking with people who have been in that league for multiple years, there was recently actually a big scandal that happened in Spain where teams were smuggling players, they had no visas, they were there illegally. So the Spanish government really has stepped in and said, we need to see a visa, we need to see paperwork, we need to see multiple things for any player to even register and play in that league. So that means that this league, because it is a starter league, will not be paying a lot of money. And that means that the, the visas and the transaction fees to actually get an import player is pretty high considering what the pay grade is. So that is one thing that people have to be on the lookout for. The second league that I would look into is also in Europe, and that is in Germany in the Regional Ligas. So it goes BBL, Pro A, Pro B, and then you hit Regional Liga 1 and 2. I would try and get an either league because this is a good starter league for a lot of players. Much like in Spain's EBA, there is a ton of teams in these divisions. Uh, and a lot of the players, a lot of the domestic players are part-time players, or I guess you would call them semi-professional players, where they hold down other jobs. They may be getting paid. They may not be getting paid. So the competition level can really vary. But if you are doing your thing, if you're playing, if you're hooping out there, then you can easily move up to the Regional Liga 1 or other leagues within Europe, as well as there's also obviously the possibility of Pro B. This is a league where you can really do your thing and show out and put up decent stats. Just because, I, like I said, there is a lot of variance in terms of what players are playing in the league 
if they're if they're serious, if they're part time, if they're semi professional, if they're professionals, if they're young guys. So if you get into this league, then you have to show out and you have to actually put up numbers in order to move up into other leagues. Now, the third league that I would try to get into if I wanted to get my start in overseas basketball is Mexico's SIBA Pack League. Now, this is a league with 24 teams, two foreigners allowed per squad. And at the time of this recording, they actually said that there would be 10 more teams on the way for a total of 34 teams in the near future. Now, that is a lot of opportunities, 60 plus opportunities for imports to get a job. But not only this, I know a lot of Americans who have Mexican blood, Mexican descent, and they can easily slide in as a national in this league. Now, another thing is that in Mexico, the visa requirements are very lenient. So unlike in Spain, where you may get tied up in some logistical problem and end up not being able to play, not because you're good enough, but because of a logistical issue, because of a visa, because it may cost too much. In Mexico, you won't have that problem. So there are many, many countries who can enter into Mexico without a visa for up to 180 days. Now, that would be more than enough time for the SIBA Pack League because it's relatively short. It'll be done within that time. So that means that there's no problem. They can just get whoever they want pretty much if the price, if the negotiations work out. So that means plenty of opportunities for you and, and especially for the Americans who are right by there in Mexico, they can simply get a flight over and start playing immediately. I know many, many of my former teammates who have played in SIBA Pack. They've moved on to other leagues within Mexico because essentially how SIBA Pack started was that it was viewed as a farm system. But now with SIBA Copa, the LNPB, all going in the Chihuahua League, there are multiple opportunities for people to keep their eyes on you to see if you're doing your thing. Word will travel in these small basketball communities within Mexico. Everyone knows everyone, just like in every overseas league. So this is a great opportunity, especially for Americans and Canadians who are looking to get their start in overseas basketball. Now, moving along to the fourth league that I would try to get into, it's the NBLC, and that's the National Basketball League of Canada. Now, out of all the leagues I will mention, this is by far the most competitive with high level division one players, mid level division one players, overseas pros who are playing in this league. So you may be asking, well, how is this an easy league? The only reason why I would include this league in this list is because of the roster structure in the NBLC. So unlike traditional FIBA leagues, because the NBLC actually is not FIBA certified, it has a different roster structure and a different roster regulation in that you're allowed six imports and six Canadians. So that means six opportunities for Americans, Europeans, Asians, however, Africans, whoever would want to play in this league, there are six opportunities for you. Whereas traditionally in these other leagues, for instance, if you would compare it to in Spain, there's only one import spot. In Germany, I believe it's only one import spot. So that means that there's multiple teams with multiple opportunities for you. But as I mentioned, it will be very difficult to get into this league just because it is a high level league. But oftentimes the problem is not your talent level. It's going to be that simply there's too many people going for the same roster spot. So that kind of is alleviated with the NBLC. Right now, there's only eight teams. So that's a little on the low side. It's going to be a bit difficult to get in. But this is something that, especially if I was American, I would definitely be looking at this league because this is a league where you can springboard onto other big leagues in South America, Europe. It has a pretty established name. Now, the last league that I would try and get into is the TBL, and that's the Basketball League. Now, this is a bit of a throw in because it's a newer league. It's not as established as these other leagues but it can still lead to good opportunities. Now, the TBL is based in the US and it is spread across the United States all throughout in different regions. Currently, there are 34 teams in the TBL spread across the USA. So that means there's plenty of opportunities and there's really, there are no restrictions on imports or nationals. It's not a FIBA regulated league. So that means it's essentially made up of all Americans looking to get on to their overseas opportunities or looking to just make some side cash while they stay at home and work and do their other thing. The main point of the TBL is that it is a great avenue to the NBLC. And that's because the current commissioner of the league, David Magley, 
actually used to be the former commissioner of the MBLC and they still have, they left on good ties, on good relations. So there is still that pipeline that happens. And if you check the transaction report every year, you'll see that there are guys from the TBL who are moving on to the NBLC and then they go from the NBLC and they go on to another league. Much how the NBLC works as a springboard league to other countries in the world, the TBL works as a springboard to the NBLC. So that would be one of the main reasons why I would go for this league. It, the competition will be, it'll be sporadic. The competition will be sporadic just because there's so many teams. Whenever there are so many teams like this, it's bound to be watered down at some point, right? 34 teams it's going to be tough to keep it competitive all the way throughout so that makes it paramount that makes it important vital that you get on a conference you get on a team that has a good competition level that can get you good film otherwise it may just be something that it's not going to maybe turn out how you think it will because just the competition level won't, won't be there the presentation won't be there and there may not be connections on some of these teams so if i were trying to play in this league there are basically a few teams that i would really look out for the syracuse stallions razorbacks i believe is another one the thoroughbreds these are just some of the teams that are just popping up to my mind right away but there's a few teams that can really help your profile really help you get good film have good connections 